As we kind of get ready for the uh, last game of the season against Indianapolis, Nick and Alex, how do you anticipate um, transitioning to a player, to an alumni? It's a really bittersweet moment. Um, obviously, I want to continue to play. I love the game. But at the same time, right now, my body just can't take it. Uh, I've been playing the entire season with a torn hip flexor, which has been a real problem. I've been struggling through that. But, I mean, I'm always going to love the school, and I'm always going to support the team. So it's going to be it's going to be fun <coughs> supporting everybody on the sidelines instead of playing now. Yeah, for me, it's much of the same deal. You know, I love playing, and um, I'm really going to miss, you know, being part of that team, you know, that plays and all that. Um, but I look forward on to the future of this club, and I really hope it goes well, and I can't wait to be there to support it. Would you say that it's tough to focus on the match against Indy going into it knowing that it's your last match? Uh, for me, not at all. Um, just gives me more fuel, really, you know. I really want to go out with a, with a bang, and it's definitely filled with anxiety, um, but I'm very excited to see how we do tomorrow. I think it's just one more night to prove that we're a quality team and we're quality players, and no one's going to stop us, and hopefully we get that win tomorrow. Uh, Adam, what are your expectations for tomorrow? Well, it's the last game of the season. Um, obviously, senior boys who will be playing, obviously going to want to go out and win. The last few games that we've played, we've had a good run of momentum. We haven't got the results until Sunday. So hopefully we can carry that win into Wednesday's game, fueled along with uh, the seniors' last game, and uh, make something of it. As the uh, seniors are kind of preparing to transition from being students to alumni, what are your plans um, for going into the off season? Uh, well, we've got to try and keep the team together. It's, uh, it was a bit of a shock last year in freshman year how little we actually do out season. So I've got to try help the freshmen this year to understand that. Hopefully, try keep everyone involved together, talking to the whole team, making sure the team's all together. Um, just make sure we get fit for next season. Is that a kind of longer process uh, to get ready for a season? Obviously, you've been through it now twice and know the physical demands. You guys have been through it four times uh, for uh, the physical demands of a season. Is, is it that difficult of a process to get yourself ready, or is it easily lost? Uh, I believe it's easily <coughs> lost. It's your, especially for European boys who play football or soccer, 10 months throughout the year. And we can't hear we play two months and we're off for 10. It's hard to maintain while we're out of season, and, but it needs to be done because we want to come back fitter, stronger, and uh, get more results next year. Would you guys say that you've developed any pre-game routines when going into these matchups? Coach doesn't like. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have something we put on the board before every single game regarding our t uh, our opponent, but we can't really say that right now. Uh, <laughs> previous coaches enjoyed it, not so much. Uh, Pascal. Especially um, on Sundays. Yeah, <laughs> especially on Sundays. Doesn't like Sundays. Um, I personally don't have any pre-match routines that I go through. Just the huddle at the start, really. Yeah, so we get in there together before the game or before the second half or before overtime. We speak, we make sure everyone understands what is required for them. And it fires us up at the start of the game. And if that's off, then the start of the next half is off. Are there any like superstitions you guys go through at the beginning of a match? Or are you guys less superstitious than, than other athletes? Um, I would say I have one. And that's, um, I have Charlie Mann. One of our freshmen put my captain band every before every game. I think that'd be my only one, and the only reason why he does that is because his name starts with C. So I was like, "Hey, let's do it." <laughs> so that'd be one for me. Um, what we kind of started to do with the, all of our student athletes we get through here is we kind of like to ask questions to get to know them a little bit better. Adam, would you say that there are any hidden talents or special talents that you have that isn't w as well known? Uh, well, I'm a goalkeeper, so I'm going to say I'm good at sh uh, shooting the ball. I'm good at playing outfield. That's a hidden talent. These don't see it that much. Uh, <laughs> Could, can you verify that at all? No. Fellow no. team, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not at all. 
Um, Alex, if you were to do a celebrity duet with anybody, who would it be with? Oh, God. It'd have to be Scarlett Johansson. Oh, wow. Yeah, just because she's, she's one classy lady. <laughs> what, what song would you sing? I'm you... not very good at song titles. I honestly couldn't tell you. I'm so not only do you not titles. pick a musical artist to do a, song, a singing duet <laughs> with, you also can't find, find a song to do with her. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> mm, that was an epic fail. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, if you could travel anywhere in the world, where would you go and why? Um, New Zealand, and because I'm one for you know the the mountain look, and I love like hiking. I like outdoorsy stuff, and I had us. My sister went, and her pictures were absolutely amazing. So I'd go there for sure. It's a much better response. <laughs> <laughs> you should have asked me that one. <laughs> yeah. Better off for yeah, I would. I would have done a duo with. Um, Let's see. The only other question we have for you guys before we let you go is before this interview was started, Becker, you were briefly discussing your fondness for your various hats. Yes. Can you say why that is, and then touch up on what sort of blame you were briefly casting on Adam before this interview started? Well, I, uh, my policy is the bigger the hat, the dumber it looks, and that's the kind of hat you need to wear. So I wear a lot of big stupid hats, that's what we call them. <laughs> And one night we all decided to hang out and wear a lot of my big stupid hats. And Adam here decided to leave it somewhere. That, and we have no idea where it is. And Adam still hasn't paid me back for it, which is great. Have you put up flyers and a picture of the hat? I haven't put up any flyers or but if you have to say it, it's big and stupid. <laughs> okay. Adam, do you have anything to say in your defense to these accusations? No evidence. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for your time, gentlemen, and good luck with the end of your season. Thank you. Thank you.